What's up, Zombie Talk 1, 2, 3, a night where we are all kind of expecting some news on the Albert Pujols decision. Uh, will he be a LeBron and go to Miami, or will he uh, stay in St. Louis uh, like I think most people predicted in the beginning of the offseason? Um, well, I think I'm a Cardinal fan. Before I get to the deal that happened also earlier today, um, I just want to say, you know, it's going to be a little hard to not see Albert Pujols in a Cardinal uniform, but organizational-wise, going forward, I think this would be... Um, not a terrible move if we let him go for the for the right price, obviously. If we can get this guy at a reasonable amount of years for a, a good price, a fair price, um, but not, you know, hurt our future. Because, I mean, what the Marlins are doing could definitely backfire. I mean, signing Reyes, and now Hanley Ramirez would rather get traded than go on a third base. I mean, you know, having Ozzie Guillen, having, uh, you know, if you get Albert Pujols to a 10-year contract, you have him till he's like 41, 42. How are you going to be paying that guy $20 million a year if he's not producing? I'm not saying he's not going to produce that age, but what if he doesn't? I mean, we'll see. But but the Marlins are doing something risky but also awesome. I mean, I love what they're doing, honestly. Um, and the question is whether they'd be able to fit Albert and then a decent starter in their payroll. And they could actually turn to the St. Louis Cardinals for that. You know, if, if you're trying to fit in... Albert's payroll, and then someone like Kyle Loesch, um, and and get the Cardinals or Jake Westbrook get the Cardinals to pay for some of it, could be an option. I think they're just looking for a, a decent starter, a pretty good starter to solidify that uh, starting uh, pitching, but also get Albert Pujols because I mean Jose Reyes is a game changer, but Albert Pujols is the biggest game changer out there, and um, for them to get Jose Reyes, Albert Pujols, and Heath Bell in an off season, I mean you're gonna see that attendance go. From here to there. I mean, a new ballpark. I mean, you're in Miami, uh, and you get Albert Pujols. Insane. But so we're going to see what happens there. Um, I, I don't really know what to say. My gut feeling tells me Marlins and Cardinals. So I don't know. Earlier today, my gut feeling was Marlins. Now it's back and forth. But what happened today was also the Blue Jays made actually a very surprising moves. How many moves that have been surprising have come from the Blue Jays this year? A lot. I think more than any other team. They got Colby Rasmus. Someone that was, I guess, being shot, but I don't think many people actually thought would be dealt. Um, I was hoping he was going to be dealt, and I was hoping we would get a huge haul for it, and it ended up we won the World Series because of the deal. Um, we didn't get too many prospects, but we are in good shape, and we won the World Series. You can't argue with that. So the Blue Jays, though, the general manager is a genius. I mean, you look at, I, I'm not even going to attempt to say his last name. It's probably not even that hard to say, but it just it looks long. Um, that's what she said, but anyway... <laughs> Uh, AA, I'll just call him AA. Um, you know, as you remember, he made the Colby Rasmus trade, dealing off some relief pitchers that he probably wouldn't end up being, bringing back. Sorry, my computer went black. And um, and then uh, he had to give up a prospect to get Edwin Jackson to make that deal. So it was pretty much a three-team deal. Um, but then the White Sox and the Blue Jays have teamed up again. So far, the Blue Jays, they gave him Jason Fraser earlier in the Edwin Jackson deal. Um... And the White Sox have been in a rebuilding stage, but this is not even a rebuilding move. This is um, giving away a guy who just saved 30 saves for your team when you guys didn't have a for sure closer um, type of move for a guy who's going to be cost controlled for the next four or five years. Yes, he signed a three-year extension in September, but he has club options for the next three, so he could potentially be cost controlled for the next six years. And, I mean, he's not even making that much money. And I don't know the club options, the amounts. Um, they're definitely probably higher than this three-year extension. He signed annual average. But, I mean, he, he he's making a lot less than if he was on the market right now. Like, if he was on the market, I think he could make five, $6 million a year because of what he showed last year, maybe four or five. Um, but you look at this market for the clothes, it's been absolutely unbelievable how much money these clothes have been able to get. Heath Bell, he said he could have got more money. He went with the Marlins, uh, good choice there. You look at um, Jonathan Papon, he made tons of money with a Phillies move. And then you look at um, potentially Ryan Madsen, if he finds the right suitor. All these guys are, are definitely getting paid, whether they're not whether or not they're getting overpaid, who knows. Yes, you can make the argument they're going for three outs, but yes, you could also make the argument that it's the hardest three outs. And a closer can be very valuable to a team defining that bullpen because without it, your bullpen does not look the same at all. Just like without a power hitting first baseman or a number three hitter, St. Louis, your your lineup does not look the same or your team does not look the same. So it changes things. Uh, but um, 
So looking at this deal for the White Sox, um, Nestor Molina, again, a converted infielder. He has very nice numbers in Double A. Some scouts really like him, but some scouts, you know, he has nice stuff, yes, but he's, he's projected a 3-4 starter, 3 at most. I mean, he's not projected in an ace or anything. So, But the White Sox are picking up a very solid starter. Now, uh, whether or not the White Sox know something about Sergio Santos that the Toronto Blue Jays don't, um, because I really don't know why the White Sox, I know they're in rebuilding stage, but they must really love Nestor Molina to, to just give one-on-one -on -one for a guy who just closed 30 games for you, and uh, it's pretty cost-controlled. I mean, it's one thing to trade a guy like Matt Thorne, who has a pretty big contract right now, or uh, Carlos Quinton, or John Danks, or, or someone like that, but to trade Sergio Santos, I think was one of the last candidates you would think would be to trade, but, uh, you know, the White Sox, they're out there, I mean, uh, Ken Williams Jr., um, I like him as a general manager. I think he can be way too aggressive sometimes, but, you know, you see it with the Alex Rio signing. Everyone knew that signing was bad from the start. I mean, they would be, they would, they could find someone in the market uh, right now to, to do a lot better than Alex Rios is doing, and probably for a little cheaper price. I mean, the contract is just bad. So, um, I mean, the White Sox, a, a decent deal. I think White White Sox fans are probably a little disappointed and definitely surprised because, I mean, who would have really thought that this guy would be traded right now? I mean, it's just it's one of the things, if you're making a list, you definitely want to be one of the last. Um, and for the White Sox to never really have a for-sure closer and maybe moving Chris Sale to the starting rotation, uh, I just don't know why you trade a guy like this. There obviously is reasons behind it, but I, it's something to question. They must really like the prospect, and I think they're going in the direction as let's get some starters. We need some starters because we could potentially be losing John Danks uh, and probably get some more starting uh, help there. We could potentially be losing Carlos Quinton, and if they go for starting pitching and relief and then some, some offense, this team will be very good in a few years, and they definitely are in a rebuilding stage. And don't count them out next year. Totally count them out. I mean, Team, it was not going to be the greatest. Um, it's not going to be look as good on paper as it did last year. But look at, you can't just look at teams on paper. I mean, look what happened last year with them. They look great on paper. They look like they would definitely battle with the Tigers and probably win the division. Um, and look what happened. Totally different story. So the White Sox getting a new a manager, I think, is a big thing. Um, and whether or not they're going to get a new general manager sometime in the future is, is another option. But um, but I think, you know, rebuilding-wise, he's not doing a terrible job right now. I just don't know why you trade a guy like this. But I think uh, with the closer market, you know, with some potential free agents um, leaving Toronto, you know, as relievers and, and closer, I think this is a very valuable move to the Toronto Blue Jays to acquire a closer, uh, which it's uh, the general manager have been trying to do all offseason, just has been disappointed with the market value. I mean, it's just way out of the price range. And, and the Blue Jays, yes, they have money to spend, but they're not going to make stupid moves. They're not just going to be, you know, bid themselves out. Um, they're not just going to, you know, be a huge bidder and, and win the services of Albert Pools for 10 years. I mean, again, that's a possibility, but I'm saying uh, the, the Blue Jays organization is very smart and has developed some players, um, as you see, and made some really smart trades, as you see with the Brett Lowry deal. Um, you know, I think it's it's almost starting to become not like the Sean Markham deal. It's more starting to become the Brett Lowry deal. Um, and then you look at their catching prospects. They got three really good catchers available. You know, two of them prospects, and then um, Aaron Sibia, very good. And uh, any team would like to have Aaron Sibia as catcher. I mean, yes, he has low bad average on base percentage, but he hits a ton of home runs. Um, so, you know, you look at their rotation, I think it will be good in the future. It's pretty solid right now. It can only get better. Uh, look for them to maybe add a starter here. And by acquiring him, you're saving lots of money because they want to get a closer. Instead of going and uh, trying to get Ryan Madsen or something, they get a guy like this. Much better option, and I think it's a great deal for the Toronto Blue Jays, a decent deal for the White Sox. Again, I think it would be a lot smarter if they, if they deal um, John Danks, Carlos Quinton, the obvious ones, uh, but this one's definitely a surprise. But, again, there's always reason behind trades, and we'll see how it works out. Could be a win-win for both teams. Could be a huge win for the White Sox. Let's see how Nestor Molina turns out. And it could be a huge win for the Blue Jays if Nestor Molina does not turn out and um, Sergio Santos turns to be an all-star closer. So we'll just see on this one. It's a wait and see at this point. But Toronto Blue Jays have made great deals this whole last year, um, and they continue to surprise me. And, and I enjoy 
looking at the deals they make because they're they make very smart deals they make very smart deals for them and they make reasonable price deals uh, get a lot of cost control guys you look at um, their roster just keeps getting better and better and it's going to be interesting to see what happens tonight and um, what happens all across baseball at the winter meetings uh, and Thursday and we'll see how the Toronto Blue Jays offseason um, will end this year and who else they will get all right thanks for watching let me talk one two three